Sebastian Castellanos. You've finally come. I've been waiting for you. Who the hell are you? My followers call me Father Theodore. Theodore Wallace is one of the three main antagonists that you'll encounter in the game The Evil Within 2, being the second one that you'll face in the game. Being a man shrouded in extreme mystery when you first meet him, Wallace's backstory and involvement with Mobius is intricately tied into the background of what happened in the town of Union throughout the events of the game. Their guard is down. Union is running so smoothly that they're not monitoring it as closely. It's now or never. We should be able to free Lily before they know we're there. Once she's out, we'll be as good as invisible. Are you sure about this, Theodore? Someone as high-ranking as you. If you get caught... I've made my decision, Kidman. I can no longer stand idly by while they use that poor girl for their selfish needs. In a lot of ways, Wallace is the true catalyst for not only what happens in this game, but also what led to the situation in the first place. You see, Wallace himself is a motivational speaker, a self-help writer, and a figurehead of spiritual enlightenment who helps lost souls of this world find solace in the fact that they are not alone. That even though most of the population may not understand your distrust of the modern world and its attempts to keep you shackled in the cookie-cutter box made by society, there is a place out there for people like you. A place where you control your own destiny, your own reality. And that place is the Mew Center. Created by Wallace to help these people, the centers brought in those who had become outcasts of society and had little place else to go. And while that spiritual society that Father Theodore had built may have been looked down upon by his peers as just a cult, I'm sure those initiated into the flock felt nothing but adoration for their connections with the group. And that flock soon found its way into Union. Seeing the potential for Theodore's Mew centers, Mobius capitalized on its members to expand upon Union. The members were perfect for what they had planned. They were already looking for an escape from modern society and, with Wallace's neuro-linguistic programming skills, their minds were far more malleable than the standard subjects. It was a perfect match, and seeing as Wallace was the leader of that center, he was brought on board as head recruiter for the Union Project. Once Wallace saw how powerful the STEM project actually was, however, he began plotting a way to control it, to take over Mobius and then the world through its power. Eventually finding himself involved with Myra Hansen's plan to free her daughter Lily from the shackles of Mobius. It would all be so perfect. Enter into STEM and find the girl, then take her place as the core so that he could assume his rightful role as father of this new world. A world shaped in his image. If only things were that simple. Run Lily, hide. I'll find you. I promise. What do you think you're doing, Myra? I'm protecting my daughter. You fool! The power she commands, you don't understand. No, you don't understand what I'll do to keep her safe. Ah! Uh, damn you, Myra! You can't run from me, I'll find you! Thwarted by Myra on the brink of realizing his ascension, Theodore was forced to search for Lily from the shadows. And as Lily evaded his grasp, so too did Union begin to crumble around him. And just as he had in the real world, Theodore began to create a new flock in Union, followers unconditionally loyal to him and his goals. Theodore enlisted the help of many around Union who took on the roles of the Disciples, charred brutes who tended to Theodore's needs, and the Harbingers, flamethrower-wielding followers who had had their minds bent to comply with Theodore's will. And above even those legions, Wallace made an even greater ally, Stefano Valentini to whom he entrusted the task of retrieving the core and bringing her to him. You found her. Excellent. You are special. You've always been special. That is why I brought you here. Why I allow you to create your own space. Prove your fealty to me. Bring me the core. Of course I do. You are an artist, Stefano. I respect that. But I need the girl first. But, unfortunately, it would appear his trust in the artist was misplaced. For as Stefano learned of the girl's potential, he attempted to take the core for himself. The fool betrayed Wallace for his own greed, 
and in the end pay dearly for that sin. But not at the hands of Wallace, at the hands of the Corps' father, Sebastian Castellanos. Stefano had become an annoyance to Wallace, a thorn in his side, and who better to be his new disciple than the man who had proven himself worthy by removing that thorn? So Wallace sought counsel with Sebastian, bringing him into a hell of his own making to offer the man a deal. Become a member of Father Theodore's flock, work together with him to retrieve Lily, and move past his own inner darkness. And in exchange, Wallace would reunite Sebastian with his daughter. Accept my invitation. I can lead you away from your own darkness. I can lead you to Lily. But Sebastian was adverse to his natural role as follower, so Wallace would have to do some... convincing. Convincing that a partnership was truly Sebastian's best shot at reunion. In the meantime, there were still others in Union who needed to be shown the way. Liam O'Neill, an easy enough convert once you pulled a few strings tied to his overflowing fears, as well as Yukiko Hoffman, the psychologist. Perhaps a bit too... headstrong to be brought to the light. Best to take care of her now before she can cause any damage to the goal. Yes, Master. Of course. The machine is operating as it should. <sighs> Thank you, Father Theodore. To hear you say that, it fills me with pride. What? But she is harmless to us. She's not... No. I would never disobey. Of course I will. Whatever pleases you. Yukiko, can you hear me? I'm in the fabrication room. Clearances don't mean much when everyone's dead. Just... Please come and meet me here. I have... Something to show you. It's important. I'm sorry, Yukiko. But he demands it. However, Sebastian was too persistent. He broke through Theodore's hideaway and insisted on confrontation before he was prepared for indoctrination. So, perhaps another tactic was in order. Perhaps shown some of the reasons that he needed Father Theodore's guidance would open his eyes. Perhaps the guilt of his past failings, not being there for the fire that had supposedly taken his daughter, not believing Myra when she told him it was all a cover-up. Perhaps being reminded of these things would give Sebastian the right push that he needed. But... In the end, Sebastian's will proved too strong. He couldn't be swayed by the guilt of the past. He refused to follow the future leader of this world. But, no matter. Even if guilt wasn't a strong enough tool to convert this non-believer. Fear. Well, as we've seen, enough fear can break the spirit of any man.